Hello. In this video, I'm going to talk uh, a little bit more about the Diels Alder reaction, uh, in particular, talking about the scope of the reaction uh, in regards to the diene. So, as a, a quick reminder, the, the Diels Alder reaction is a reaction between a diene and something labeled a dienophile. Um, and for this video, we're just going to look at uh, the, the structure of the diene. Uh, and these two things come together to make a new cyclohexene, whoa, new cyclohexene molecule. And uh, it's probably helpful to just remind you of the, the mechanism of this reaction. And as I stated in a previous video, there is really no uh, directionality inherent in the mechanism that the uh, can be clockwise or counterclockwise. The Diels Alder reaction requires something called the S cis conformation. And it's the way that I've drawn my diene above. Um, and what it really means is about our, about this single bond, uh, it looks like that this thing is cis, uh, about the single bond. This geometry is required uh, for the uh, for the Diels Alder reaction to happen. The, um, the trick is that the S trans conformation of the zigzag looking conformation, it's trans about that single bond is actually slightly more stable. So for most dienes, there's actually a little bit of an, uh, of an energy input requirement to get to from the S trans to the S cis conformation. And so for what that, what that means, uh, our dienes, uh, if they're dienes locked in, whoops, The dienes that are locked in the S cis conformation, they are very reactive. Classic example often cited is, let me move this back on the screen. Classic example often cited, but certainly is not the only example is cyclopentadiene. Cyclopentadiene is actually so reactive It can react with itself, um, you know, and produce a Diels Alder adduct. And in fact, cyclopentadiene is not a stable, even a sta it's not actually stable under normal conditions. It exists as a dimer. Uh, it has to be regenerated. But likewise, dienes that are locked in the S trans conformation do not react at all. Uh, and so here's an example of one, and I'm going to stick with the uh, cyclopentene theme here. Uh, these sort of, of exocyclic kind of dienes are just not at all reactive. And so even if you were to give it uh, and even if I chose a really supercharged dienophile, and we'll talk about that in the next video, there's, there's generally no reaction. One last consideration uh, that's worth talking about is the influence of sterics. So you might look at this diene and say that there might, there might not be a lot of steric 
hindrance here because in the S trans conformation, everything looks like it's, um, everything looks like it's, you know, far away from each other. But in the S cis conformation, well, even in this case, the all trans and the S cis conformation, uh, things look a little bit different. So in this particular case, everything's still kind of uh, far apart from each other. But if we look at the case where we have one of these alkenes in the diene being cis, now when this thing uh, switches to the S trans conformation, we have this methyl group here and this hydrogen atom here, really close together and uh, generally it is not something uh, that that is that is happy so there's some steric hindrance here and so this alkene would react slower than that alkene and in fact I'll just grab my all trans all trans reacts faster than the, the alkene with one trans and one cis. And likewise, <clears throat> this one reacts faster than the case where they are both cis. Because when the all cis wraps up into the S, -trans, S, or the S cis conformation, the two methyl groups are right on top of each other. In the next video, I'm going to talk about some issues related to the dienophile uh, and what kind of dienophiles make good uh, dienophiles to the Diels-Alder reaction. Thank you for watching.